Russell Talk. I'm Pete Quinnell. Welcome to the Russell Talk News. And hey, you, what's your favorite feud in wrestling right now? It doesn't matter because whatever you just said has just been topped at a WWE house show by a feud between Solo Sokoa and this little girl in the audience. After repeatedly calling him a chicken throughout his match with Matt Riddle, Solo eventually had had enough, telling the girl, I'm beating his ass. Why are you calling me a chicken? Words that will no doubt go down in history. Anyway, here's some wrestling news. CM Punk is on his way back to AEW with the impending debut of Collision, but one question that we haven't got an answer to yet is what he'll actually be doing once he's back. Will he be coming back to cut a promo, have a match? Who will he be feuding with, and will it be the Elite? Well, quite possibly not that last bit, as according to Sean Ross Sapp on Fightful's SRS Backstage Report, there have been heavy pitches for various feuds once Cal Milka Punk comes back to our screens, including the likes of Chris Jericho and current ROH TV champion Samoa Joe. However, the most recent idea is that Coin Market Punk will in fact be teaming up with FDR to take on... Bullet Club Gold, not the Elite. Sorry. Still though, Bullet Club Gold is pretty neat. A Jay White versus Punk singles match spinning out of it sounds pretty tasty. But then what comes after Bullet Club Gold? How about some old members of Bullet Club like the Elite? I'll keep saying it until it happens. The reason for this feud with Bullet Club Gold is reportedly because Punk has taken a liking to both Jay White and Juice Robinson, which Makes sense, they're both very likeable guys. Who would you want to see Punk feud with once he's back? Let me know in the comments. But it seems it doesn't matter who Punk feuds with once he's back, because there might not be that many people watching anyway. Because believe it or not, Collision is more than a one-night show in Chicago, and there are in fact other dates announced for its first run of shows, and those shows aren't doing too well in terms of ticket sales. Dave Meltzer spoke about this on Wrestling Observer Radio, where he said that I've had people in Calgary tell me that one's a little bit struggling for the Saturday night, but I think with the Owen Hart tournament, I think they should do okay. But Hamilton and Regina, 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 one of the two are going to be very, very tough. They're like 700 tickets for the collision in Hamilton. He went on to expand on that point, noting that with the Canadian dates penciled in, part of the reason the tickets may be struggling up north is because there's been no announcement as to whether Canada will actually be able to watch collision. In Canada, so I'm told, they only have access to Dynamite on TV, not Rampage. So it's still uncertain as to whether collision is actually viewable there or not, which may have an impact on those early ticket sales. You know, I should speak to our President Canadian to see how he feels about this. Uh, here we go, I'm just gonna call him now. Um, oh. Hey, Tempest, how do you feel about Canada not being able to get Rampage on TV and not knowing whether they can get Collision or not? That's f***ing bullshit. I've had to pay for AEW pots on Fight TV for two f***ing years so I can watch a review Rampage by these people and now they don't even have Collision on TV? That's f***ing bullshit. It's bullshit. How else am I supposed to watch CM Punk on TV? I have to do reviews. I have to do reviews while I'm home. They won't even let me get away from it when I'm on vacation, Pete. I don't want to have to pay for AEW Plus no more. Put it on TSN. Okay, great. Thanks, mate. Good stuff. Great stuff. Thank you, Tempest. Punk has, unsurprisingly, been shifting tickets for the debut show in the United Center in Chicago, but it seems his influence is a bit more localized now to the Chicago area and doesn't extend all the way up to Canada. And now we have a special message from the second best Turbo, Turbo Jack. I mean, it's Rasser Turbo Jack, and now is the time in a month where Turbo Jack says he's Turbo... Thanks! WrestleTalk's amazing patrons. Thank you so much, patrons. WrestleTalk couldn't do this without you. So thank you, the $100 man, C.D. Holmer. Well, it's Aiden Rockwell. The Castle Run, DX Solo. Double L, Liam Leonard. Mad Mac, the Meat Father. Have an argy pargy, magy pargy. The Mad Man, Matthew Allen. Ryan, Disco, Stuart, Star Wars Wrestling. Thomas, the prize hooker, Solanzano, the tackle man, Thomas Hernandez. Redacted one, Jake. And Will, the MS Warrior, Stewart. You too can get your own WrestleTalk shout out by going over to patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk.com. That's patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk.com for loads more exclusive content now. Thank you, Turbo Jack. Don't know why they got him to read those names and not Turbo Jake, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's fine. I don't, I don't mind at all. So it's fine. It's fine. I don't... Returning to AEW news, it seems there may be another long awaited return before long. 
but only maybe. According to the Wrestling Observer, Santana will be ready to return from injury soon. He's been out since the Blood and Guts match last year with a torn ACL, so nearly a full year at this point. But the interesting bit will be what he does when he comes back. Santana had some vocal unrest in the company, seemingly counting down the days until his contract expired on Twitter, and reportedly falling out with his tag partner Ortiz. Now, presumably his contract has been extended due to his injury, but if he does come back, will it just be for the remaining time? Because that would only be about two months or so if his previous tweets are to be believed. And if he does come back, he most likely won't be tagging with Ortiz if their falling out hasn't been resolved. So where does Santana fit on the AEW roster? I'll tell you where he fits. Collision! It's where everybody else who was at one point disgruntled in the company is going, what's the worst that could happen? Let's talk about WWE now, and this week's Raw has been received rather well, hasn't it? Good matches, story progression, things mattering, look at them go. Aside from the Gunther vs KO match, which was awesome, there were a couple of very notable things that happened on Raw. One being the main roster debut of Caden Carter and Katana Chance when they faced Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler, and the other being the story of Damian Priest and the Judgment Day, with some dissension among them, and a World Heavyweight title match against Seth Rollins to boot. And it seems those two acts in particular have been getting some praise backstage, with PW Insider reporting that WWE was happy with Caden Carter and Katana Chance's work in their debut match, and that there was lots of praise internally for Damian Priest's work against Seth Rollins. And deservedly so, I'd say. If this was step one of WWE addressing their floundering women's tag division, then that's a very solid step one. And this Damian Priest Judgment Day story has some legs, especially with all the history between Balor and Rollins rolled into the mix as well. And if you didn't happen to see it as well, Damian Priest shook Seth Rollins' hand after his title match after Raw went off the air, and Balor had the opportunity to, but didn't. Just a little extra notch in the story and the seeming babyface turn for Priest coming soon. Unless, swerve, Balor is the one who's kicked out of the group instead. I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. On to NXT now, and on last week's episode, we saw the returns of Baron Corbin and Mustafa Ali to add an extra dynamic to the show. While this is by no means the first time we've seen main roster stars make the trip to Tuesday nights, as we've had people like AJ Styles, Johnny Gargano, and New Day in the past, these were two of the free agents that were made in the latest draft. And as we know, free agency means so much because the draft is very <laughs> very important. So was that coincidence or was this move actually planned in advance? According to Fightful Select, the latter. They report that there were tentative plans in place quite a while ago to have Corbin and Ali work NXT, which is one of the reasons the free agent tag was given to them during the draft. And, you know, Despite all the cynicism about the draft and the free agency and the draft not mattering and them already not abiding by the brand split, maybe we're being a little bit too harsh. Maybe we should give them some credit for thinking ahead and making sure the free agents are the ones appearing on NXT. So why was Dana Brooke on NXT last night? She's not a free agent, I checked. So really, it doesn't matter, does it? Yes, Dana Brooke returned to NXT on last night's episode. Don't worry, I'll have my one minute one take of the show here shortly. She came back to enter herself into the Women's Championship number one contender battle royal, which she lost, of course, because even in NXT, she can't buy a win. But good for her, I suppose. I hope she does something in NXT. The other notable thing to mention outside of the one minute one take because I actually want to talk about it is Bron Breaker challenging Seth Rollins to a World Heavyweight Championship match. Yep. On NXT, he said that. In the closing moments of the show, Breaker called out Rollins to come to NXT to defend his belt, and that while Rollins may have been the inaugural NXT champion, Breaker was the most dominant. I'm honestly very into this idea, whether it results in Rollins going to NXT, or Breaker going to the main roster, or both. Rollins defending his belt wherever and whenever is a surefire way to get over this new belt, and facing exciting challenges like Priest and Breaker is a great start. All the thumbs up from me. And now it's time, I suppose it's time for my one minute one take of NXT, while I will attempt to recap everything that happened on last night's episode of NXT in one minute and in one take. Start the timer. Baron Corbin cut a promo about NXT being better back in his day and is interrupted by Ilya Dragunov. The two set up a match for later and then Trick Williams attacked Corbin afterwards. There was some comedy with Thea Hale and Duke Hudson. I do not want to elaborate. Braun Breaker then attacked Dragunov backstage, which wrote him out of his match with Corbin. Ava Rain won in her debut match as she pinned Ivan Isle in a six-person tag by using her mask as a weapon. Cody Rhodes would like a word. Stax asked Tony D'Angelo in jail who ratted him out. He says it was Gallus. This will be weird if it turns out to be Stax himself. Von Wagner's assaulted two therapists but stayed with the third one because she's in a 
attractive woman, I do not want to elaborate. Blair Davenport beat Danny Palmer, Dana Brooke is back, and Tiffany Stratton did a promo. Baron Corbin then beat Trick Williams after Williams' knee buckled because of targeting from Corbin during the match uh, earlier. Uh, that's good stuff. Nathan Fraser hosted Hard Hitting Home Truths, which is a John Oliver parody, and we would never take inspiration like that with having the host on the right side of the screen with a picture in the corner. Mustafa Ali beat Joe Gacy, and Noam Dar debut one of the worst faction names of all time, calling his group the Metaphor. All right, can we stop the timer? Can we stop the timer for a second? I know I'm breaking the game here, but we need to appreciate how awful that is. There's four of them, so they're the metaphor? Wh what is that upon off? Are you a metaphor? What is metaphorical about your group? And if it's just the metaphor, then what is meta about your four? Th th it's so bad. Metaphor! All right, start the timer. Eddie Thorpe beat Damon Kemp. Screeps defeated Dabakato. Thea Hell won the number one contenders battle royal by selling outside for most of the match. And Bron Breaker challenged Seth. There you go. That was probably a minute without the bit in the middle that wasn't included in the minute timer, right? That counts. It counts. I didn't make any mistakes. It's fine. Now make sure to check out the latest episode of What's On at Cineworld with Luke and Dan Layton. Here's a clip. Hmm. I did it. I did the one minute thing. Although I can't tell if it was actually a minute or not because I had the thing in the middle. I'm sure I'll see in the edit. It'll be fine.